We were finally at the point where we could build the pole barn shell. Gravel was poured on the building pad. Holes were drilled every eight feet and cement poured down to create pads that the poles would sit on. The post protector slid on the bottoms of the posts and the posts were then set in the holes. These post protectors are supposed to add hundreds of years of service life to the posts. Everything goes incredibly fast from this point. The 2x4s are fixed to the outside of the posts. After the posts are nailed on and the top 2x12s secured, you're ready for the trusses. For this, you can see the builder used an attachment on his equipment to lift each truss up. Attaching the strapping perpendicular across the trusses and the 2x4s around the entire walls creates one solid structure. When the skeleton of the building was up and everything was in place, the plumbers were able to come in and dig shallow trenches to install the pipe. They installed the pipe for the inlet of the well, pipe for the washing machine and sink in the garage, the sink in the kitchen, sink in the bathroom, as well as the toilet and shower bathtub. They also installed three drains in the garage that would drain out the side of the building into the field. Before the steel was put on the outside of the building, foil insulation was fixed to the outside on all the walls and under the roof. The metal siding and roof went on in just a couple of days as well as the windows and exterior doors. At the same time the power company dug a trench and ran power from the power line all the way back to this box they had installed beside the building. They then ran a line from the box to a meter they installed on the side of the building. The slab was poured and sealed in one morning. Because there's always a chance that you'll have material shifting, expansion, shrinking with weather, relief cuts are made to control where any possible cracks occur. When the floor was cured, the garage doors were added, and the electrician came in and installed the electrical panel on the inside of the building, and the one outlet required so I could have the final inspection. The septic system was installed in one day. The installer attached pipes to the exit pipe the plumber had set under the slab. The septic installer ran it to a septic tank that he had installed. The tank then had five lines, each 70 feet and 66 inches deep. So the septic field drain lines sit in about a 3,500 square foot area. Anyone who's dealt with drain field lines in the past knows they used to be corrugated flexible pipe in trenches of gravel. Now they seem to use these packing peanut like foam pieces around the pipes instead of gravel. The drain rate is supposed to be excellent and I imagine it's a whole lot easier to repair or replace in the future if ever needed. The septic field was covered. I put grass on it later. I paid the septic installer $3,000. The soil specialist who designed the system did the final inspection and sent it to the state health department and I paid a $200 fee for that. I applied for insurance for a farm structure, cost me $340 per year, and then called the inspector for the final inspection. The final inspection included the structure, power, and plumbing. After it, it passed. I received the state health department approval letter and certificate of occupancy for the pole barn, which was labeled a detached garage on the building permit. And all the activities in this video took one month, mainly due to rain delays.